Hey, how's it going, Yankees fans? This is Felix from MLYNews.com. Hola, como estas, like always. Hey, the Yankees checked up on Mike Moustakas. They were going around asking what his price was. The Yankees seem to be waiting for the prices on these players to drop. But if you read recent articles that are out out there, it is Scott Boris holding up the free agency market. So... Grady Boris is at it again. I mean, people keep blaming Major League Baseball teams out there, but um, obviously it's Scott Boris because all of his clients are still free agents, so they hire majority of them. So, yes, the Yankees have checked up on Mike Moustakas. Also, the Yankees are said to have offered, I don't know if this is true, supposedly he's coming from Heyman, they have offered... Todd Frazier, $10 million or 12 I'm hearing it's 10 for one year. Well, like I keep saying, 2019, if you thought this free agency was brutal, 2019 is going to be more brutal. There's just going to be a whole bunch of high-caliber free agents out there. Your Harpers, your Matt Harveys, your Manny Machados, etc. It's going to be a big free agent year. This is why you don't see teams spending this year. So... I don't know, if is Todd Frazier a good businessman? Because if he goes on the market again in 2019, he's not going to really get anything unless he has a super duper crazy all-star type caliber year. I don't know. Is Todd Frazier smart enough at this point to get a multi-year contract? Like I keep saying and said before, he will be a perfect fit on the Mets. Hey, nothing against Todd Frazier. He's a good clubhouse guy, but... We already had a couple of seasons with Chase Headley. And Chase Headley had more upside than Todd Frazier because Chase Headley was a switch hitter. Sure, Todd Frazier has more power, but he's not really going to do much for you offensively. Like I said, a couple of dingers, doubles here and there. But offensively, defensively, he's great. But offensively, like I said, we already had a deal with a player like Chase Headley. He didn't produce much, but like I said, the upside to him was being a switch hitter. And he caught fire at the end of the year in some instances in the playoffs, Chase Headley. But like I said, Todd Frazier, a full year with him. I mean, offensively, he's just going to be like a free out sometimes in some situations. Like I said, I said this last year, the Yankees are doing a mistake if they don't go out and get a free agent picture an ace or what you consider an ace people keep attacking me about Sonny Gray here's what some people don't understand the Yankees set themselves back with obtaining Sonny Gray sure he's great sure he has supposedly he has ace stuff material the Yankees were supposed to get a power arm or a strikeout artist obtaining Sonny Gray when they obtained them, they did not acquire a pitcher that's going to pitch out of a jam when it comes to, let's say, striking out a batter. Sure, Sonny Gray has strikeout material, but he's not going to give you over 200 strikeouts per year. So if you ask me, the Yankees went in reverse. And this year, you're seeing it firsthand that they want another dominant pitcher that's going to overpower hitters. Let's say the velocity might not be there but they have a track record in striking out batters. So again, I don't know if other teams in Major League Baseball hire like Twitter bots to spam Twitter and say stuff like, oh, the Yankees aren't going to get rid of Jacoby Ellsbury. Ellsbury's trash. He's the most horrible player ever. The Yankees no way are going to move him. Other teams, they're just stupid if they take him, even if the Yankees pay more than half. I don't know if that's possible. I'm not trying to get into conspiracy theories, but I'm seeing a whole bunch of stuff like that from so-called Yankees fans. What you guys should be doing, I'm not talking about you guys in particular. I'm talking about the naysayers. What the naysayers should be doing, they should be selling Jacoby Ellsbury because Jacoby Ellsbury isn't that bad. I'm seeing people say that Austin Jackson, out of all players, is better than Jacoby Ellsbury. Really? Austin Jackson is solid. They're talking about war. The new thing is, what's this player's war? 
I can name you a whole bunch of players that are not considered subpar high caliber and subpar players have a higher war than them. So this whole argument about WAR, et cetera, oh, this guy's WAR is lower than this guy's WAR. Mike Moustakis is garbage because his WAR is lower than Jacoby Ellsbury's. Really, I don't base my full opinions based off WAR, the new thing that's out there now. Everybody's a WAR expert. Oh, uh, Twitter expert. Oh, I got a whole bunch of numbers for you. Hey, 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 here, play these numbers as the lottery. They're just throwing out numbers everywhere. So if you guys remember, when the Yankees traded for Alex Rodriguez, it was mid-February. Like I said, I don't see the Yankees signing Todd Frazier. $10 million for one year is a bad business decision. If he has multi-year contracts that he could sign, that is the better solution. Even if it's away from his house, it makes no sense to become a free agent yet again in 2019. Also, this chatter about Murderer's Row 2.0. The Yankees already had that in 2004, okay? I don't want to hear about, oh, the Yankees are so offensively superior that they're just going to destroy other teams. No, if history proves this, it shows that having a stacked team like that makes you, I don't know, offensively slow. I don't know if that's the word, but... It makes you slow on the bases, and teams get used to getting that big hit. Oh, here comes a home run hitter. Don't worry. We're not going to do anything now. We're just going to leave it to our big dogs to hit a dinger. That's what happens when you have a so-called murderer's row lineup. I hope it's not the case. I hope the Yankees are offensively a threat where they have speed on the bases where players like Didi, maybe... Torres, etc., have high runs scored where they're scoring runs. Like I said, with this offensive juggernaut stuff, you can't say it's a short thing. I personally have seen this before. If anything, like I said, it makes the team slower when it comes to offense. So, like I said, I hope it's not the case. We have young players before in 2004. We really had players in their 30s, and now we have players in their 20s. So it might be different this time. Who knows? I'm wishing for the best. But like I said, you can't sleep on that. You can't go around and say, hey, our offense is certified. No. You got to wait and see. Spring training, the first two weeks of the season, then you can evaluate what this team has potential in doing. So again, Yankees fans, a lot of people ask me this. What if Todd Frazier does not sign with the Yankees? Like I said, I put another, me personally, put another solution at third base with Johan, my previous video. Well, let's say the Yankees don't take that route. What do they do? I highly doubt that they're going to store Andahar at third for a number of reasons. They still haven't got his backup. They still haven't signed a Danny Espinosa type player. He's backing Torres at second base. So, the Yankees haven't done that with third base. Who knows? Like I said, maybe they get a Manny Machado. Who knows? I don't see them signing Mike Moustakis long-term at third base because, like I said, Manny Machado's a free agent in 2019. Then, after him, it's Nolan Arenado. So, I don't see the Yankees signing Mike Moustakis long-term. Especially when you got all those fanboys out there throwing out the WAR numbers. Oh, Mike Moustakas is horrible. And I'm saying I don't want to hear their mouths because they're already going around saying, oh, Jacoby Ellsbury is just trash. This guy's WAR is higher than his or whatever. That's what we're going to hear with Mike Moustakas. So, I don't know. It falls to Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier does not sign. Do they push the alarm? Do the Yankees push the red button and say, hey, Orioles, what's up? We're going to offer you this and that. Just give us Manny Machado for a year. We might sign him for less once he knows and once he sees what being the Yankees is all about. But like I said, who knows? It all falls to Todd Frazier. Does he get $10 million? If you ask me, that's a bad business decision. A World Series is not guaranteed. When you have solid rotations like the Red Sox, the Red Sox might – 
have a good year this year, folks. They might be on top of that AL East for the majority of the season. Who knows? With a solo rotation bouncing back from last year. Who knows how they come back? Then you have the Astros. So you have to take pitching into consideration of how a team is going to perform. As of now, the Houston Astros have the best rotation in the major leagues. Second, the Boston Red Sox have the second best rotation in the American League. Then third, fourth, I don't know if the Yankees are in those talks. So they have to go out and sign a free agent. Jacoby Ellsbury needs to be moved. Like I said, the decision was made. He's not going to be returning to the Yankees in 2018. If they have to release him, then they might just do that. This has been Felix from my1wynews.com. Share, like, and subscribe. I will check you out next time.